do you find at the minute being a musician have you I don't want to say falling into the trap but that's what it feels like sometimes John Mayer posted a thing online he did a, a talk at Berkeley where he said the biggest problem we have is that most people aspire to create a tweet that, and, and their notion of it is being sort of pushed in that direction of everything being small social media quick hits of stuff mm -hmm. and you become almost part musician part administrator promoter all those different things how have you managed to keep the balance between the playing and all those other aspects of honestly it's, it's a, that's a good question I haven't done a good job of it lately I've actually part of the aristocrats I, I have some management duties in the aristocrats and and we're still working out the kinks in our in our business and I've been picking up the slack lately and uh, especially the last couple months I've been doing way too much administrating and typing and tweeting and promoting and not enough playing it's it's a it's a very legitimate concern uh, but I mean you know you have to manage your own business or someone will manage it for you in a way that you might not like yeah so it's a constant struggle uh, I'm lucky in a way because I know how to manage business because I had a corporate job but sometimes it's a curse because I end up like doing more of that than playing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually working on extricating myself from some of these things right now. Yeah. And it's something that I think every player should be conscious of. You know, if you're playing all the time and you're not doing any promoting and you're wondering why you don't have any gigs, then that's something you need to address. Yeah. If you've, you know, got the world's greatest business model and you spend all your time doing that and then you, you, know, you look at your instrument and you go, what's that fret? Yeah, then you've you got a separate issue. Yeah. That's, that, that is a struggle of a thing and a thing as, I mean, I personally find that different. It's almost like different years. Some years you do like a, a plan heavy year. Yeah. Some years it ends up being other things. And I mean, have you? Would you say looking at that, where you just see the balance, think I need to address that, or does it freak you out a little bit? It doesn't freak me out because I have a capacity to handle it. But I have moments where I go, okay, I'm out of balance, <laughs> and I need to address this. But you can't just address it overnight. You, mm -hmm. We all are. We have business commitments, and we gotta you know, requires working with other people in order to straighten this stuff out. So looking at maybe some of the other musicians that you play with and some of your favorite musicians in the last five to ten years that you've done work, either as a side man or had them work beside you, do you have any advice for musicians in terms of the things that you've come across where you think, I would always hire a guy that is like this and I struggle very much with people who do? Well, I will always want to work with people who are cool and who listen when they play, you know? So they're cool in person. And they probably listen in person as well if they listen while they play. Uh, and then some, because, you know, one of the great things about, about Guthrie is that he's such a great listener. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's such a generous player when he's playing with other people. He can do anything at any time. There's, there is no limit, a truly limitless technical player. And not just technical either. I mean, just any idea he has, he can play at any time. But he and those guys are very few. I'm not a limitless technical player at all. I have severe limits on my technical ability. But he's always listening and always making the music better. And that's the kind of people I want to play with, is the people who, regardless of their technical ability, you know, if you're at the professional level, fine. Just make the song and the band better. And just listen. It's funny how many guys, as they ascend that technical ladder and get more and more facility, I mean, I find sometimes the ability to discern what is right to play and that musical yeah. thing gets left behind sometimes. I mean, you've done a lot of work backing very virtuosic players. Do you do you get calls to do smaller gigs or album sessions or things like that for people where you you sort of sit in and think, this, well, this, this guy is a better player than he is a musician? Oh, well, there's a lot of guys out there like that. Uh, you know, uh, and sometimes it goes that way and, you know, you work and you get the job done and, and that's that. Uh, and especially in our line of work where, you know, we're playing fancy music. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a lot of people, you know, who feel like they have to be a fancy player in order for the fancy music to work. Uh, I'm living proof that you don't need to be a fancy player in order for the fancy music to work. Because I look at myself as not a fancy player. I don't have, you know, jaw-dropping technical ability just to sit down and just go you know i mean some guys can do that great there's nothing wrong with that and some guys can do that and bring it to a song i just never worked on that stuff when i was a kid because i never thought that i would be playing fancy music i really didn't 